I guess we're ready to get going. Uh, welcome to the WinTech TV webinar. My name's Phil Pilcher. I'm currently the uh, principal investigator for this project, which is funded by the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education, or ATE, program. Um, today's webinar, we will show you some of the learning materials that we've uh, built at the WinTech TV website. And we'll have uh, an instructor talk to you about uh, how he uses those materials in his wind technology program. And uh, at the end of the uh, session, we'll also tell you a little bit about the National Science Foundation ATE program, just in case you might have a project in mind and are looking for a possible funding source. Today, uh, we have also with me our Dave Vertle, who teaches wind turbine technology at Highland Community College. And you've all already heard from Jason Underwood from Northern Illinois University, who's handling all the technical aspects of this presentation. So now we're going to turn it over to Jason. He's going to uh, give you a little bit of information about the room that we're in, the Adobe Connect room, and some of the things that you might be working with in that. Sorry about that little delay there. Thanks, Phil. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. Uh, first, it looks like we've heard from everyone uh, that, that you can hear the audio. Um, I'm going to post another question in the chat pod in case someone can't hear. I've got everybody's hands up. Um, so I'll, I'll post a note asking if anyone can't hear. So I'll assume everyone can hear OK for now. The chat pod in the lower right-hand corner of the screen is where you're welcome to put questions that you have throughout the presentation. Uh, anytime you like, and the presenters will address those questions as uh, either during the presentation if they feel that it fits or at the end of one of the sections. Um, the Most of the work will be uh, in the, the content will be in the left side of the screen, and occasionally there'll be a, a little piece of interactivity for you. So if you have any trouble or questions during the presentation, if you lose audio for some reason, go ahead and put a note in the chat uh, box. Um, if you um, absolutely have a crisis and everything crashes for you, you can call 815-753-0673, and I'll put, that, uh, I'll put that number in the chat pod for you. Um, so I guess I'll turn it back over to Phil then. Okay, we're uh, going to do a little activity here right now um, with this poll pod. We'll try to get, uh, we've got people from all over the country actually uh, listening in today, and not everybody is acquainted with each other. Um, I'm not acquainted with everybody either. And so we're going to have a couple of questions for you to answer so we can get a little uh, idea of uh, who who's listening, and what sorts of things they do. So first one is, are you teaching in a dedicated wind technology program right now? So you can click yes, no, um, and in that pod. And then also, are you teaching some alternative energy content in your program? I know we had a couple of people that signed up that said they weren't necessarily teaching wind turbine technology uh, full-time, but they were teaching some alternative energy content. And it looks as if we've got about half and half on uh, uh, teaching in a dedicated wind technology program. But a lot of people, 80%, are teaching some alternative energy content right now. We've also got some interested people that are not teachers sitting in um, with us today. Okay, I think we'll try the next one here.
great. So I guess we got to figure out what we're going to be doing. So everybody's uh, on board with that. The goals for today's session uh, are uh, at the end of this webinar, you'll be familiar with the learning materials available at windtechtv.org. You'll understand a little bit of the process used to create the site. And you'll also have gained knowledge about the ATE program. So I guess I will give you a little bit of my background since you're going to have to be listening to me for some time. This won't take very long. Um, I've been involved with uh, uh, the ATE program for some time. Oops, excuse me. Got the wrong slide. I started out as an aviation maintenance instructor uh, working for a community college uh, in 1985. And I worked there for about 12 years. So I'm familiar with uh, the community college uh, technical side of things. And around 1992, I became interested in uh, using computers uh, to further the goals of our technical education. At that time, of course, things were a lot different. Uh, we called it CBT. That was computer-based training was the buzzword at that time. And uh, we were working in pretty primitive conditions as far as uh, the computers. And uh, there was no real networking like we can do now uh, with this, this sort of webinar thing. But also, around 1996, a professor from Northern Illinois University contacted us at uh, at Rock Valley College where I was, was teaching to work with him on a National Science Foundation project. And he was uh, had built something called the Welding Lab on Disk, which was a welding simulator that actually fit on a floppy, two and a half inch floppy disk. My role in that was to, um, my role in that was to be the field test coordinator. So when we tested the material, um, we lined that all up and we did all that at Rock Valley College. But since then, I've been involved in several um, ATE projects, uh, everything from aviation to machine tool technicians to uh, laser cladding technicians. And now I'm working at Highland Community College uh, with the wind turbine technicians. OK. I should speak up. Okay. I'd like to give you a little bit of the background on the project. Um, typically, an ATE project is a three-year process. So we will have uh, activities over a three-year period. In year one, we started in July uh, 1 of 2010. And that's when the funds release happened for the program. Uh, our goal was to build useful instructional materials for wind turbine technicians. Uh, my personal goal was to make some high quality HD videos. Uh, I've been making um, instructional videos for some time, but I had a, a goal of uh, making some better ones. And we knew that we were going, things were going all toward HD, so we wanted to start to work uh, in high definition so that we could sort of future-proof anything that uh, we did build. Um, I also have a sort of a personal goal of uh, making decent materials for technicians. Oftentimes we th see things on uh, YouTube or whatever for technicians that are not very high quality. And so I thought we could do a little better than that. Um, we did form an advisory group at that time. An advisory group is pretty important for most of the ATE projects. And uh, uh, actually, we've got a, one, a couple of our uh, advisory group members sitting in with us today uh, in this webinar. In October of that year, we did a little bit of project management training in Washington, DC. Uh, there's an annual conference for the ATE program, and they have training for all of the new PIs, or principal investigators, uh, at that time. 
we started up, uh, it took a little while to get going. You know, we have to talk to the advisory committee and figure out what's going on, what we need. Uh, but we determined that uh, one of the things that could be useful is to have something that would let people know what a wind turbine technician does all day and how it's, uh, what sort of training it's necessary for you to get that kind of job. So we began a, a career awareness video pretty much right away. That particular video has uh, by far the most views on our YouTube channel, oddly enough. It's, uh, it was just no comparison. I think we're at about six or 7,000 views of that particular video, probably because it's a general interest sort of thing. Some of the other things on the site are a little bit more technically oriented. Not everybody may, may uh, wish to see those. Um, we also did our first uh, actual technical video of the Yaw Systems introduction that was in February of 2011. It, it takes a little time to get a project like this going. We didn't charge right in and, and you know we didn't have six videos done in the first six months. Uh, we did launch the website in February of 2011 as well. And we uh, made some visits to some project partners. Uh, some of those partners are sitting in with us today. We have people from uh, uh, Columbia Gorge Community College. Um, I made a visit out to there and uh, shot some video out there and had some uh, very good uh, interaction with the folks there. And they'll actually be doing a field test for us uh, very soon. Okay, in year two, we finished up our what is called our YAW module. Uh, we proposed to do several modules that consisted of uh, six or seven lessons each. And we finished the YAW module pretty, pretty much in year two. Uh, we started up a, a high strength fastener module. And we also have some physics modules that are uh, part of the site too. We also did our first showcase at the PI conference in uh, Washington. Showcase is basically a two-hour trade show where you sit sit in a booth with your materials and uh, you let other people know what's uh, been going on with your project. And we also tested some webcasting. Um, we thought that when we made the proposal back in 2009, we thought that it would be a, ver a valuable thing to have some live broadcast from Highland Community College of some of the things that were going on in the lab and share those with other um, programs around the country. It turns out that the live, the synchronous or live uh, webcasting is not as popular as just having the videos available. Uh, we also uh, participated in the Illinois Ag Women Conference that year. Part of the goals uh, of the ATE program are to uh, bring people from underrepresented groups into technical fields. And so uh, uh, two of our project team, who are website designers, uh, Teresa Vowell and Kemaly Winter, uh, went down to Springfield, Illinois, and talked to 400 high school students that were part of the Illinois Ag Women Conference. And they also went and took one of the uh, students from our wind technology program, Samantha Ewens, who uh, also spoke to the girls about uh, getting into a technical career. Um, we also launched the YouTube channel in year two. Um, we had been trying to get people to view all the videos right through the website, and we decided that it was uh, time to branch out a little bit, and so we launched the YouTube channel that year. Now we're in year three. Um, I participated in the high tech conference out in Denver, which is another way to get the word out. One of the things that um, ATE program uh, demands is that you can build all sorts of great things, but you need to also disseminate those materials that you might build or let people know about the work that you've been doing. So that was part of the thing that uh, we did there. Um, 
we've also begun our fiber optic module. We got, haven't got the first video done there yet, but uh, that's being constructed. And we're also doing some field testing. Uh, we did field testing at Highland Community College, and we did some in Minnesota at Riverland Community College. Uh, Steve Vieter is with us from Riverland today. He uh, helped us with that field test. And in the field testing, what we do is um, compare the materials that we've built and the videos and the anything else and try to compare those to just standard classroom instruction. The goal being that we would hope that any of the materials that we build would be as good as a classroom in instructor, a regular stand-up instruction. So what we do is a pretest where students of, they don't have to be wind technology students, they're just community college students. Uh, we have them take a pretest on the material. We have them do some classroom instruction. We have them do some uh, viewing of the materials that we've built. And then we give them a post-test and crunch those numbers down and see. Uh, we're trying to make sure that uh, our materials are of a certain quality. And we've also started a hydraulic torque module in, uh, in year three. We will be doing a field test at Columbia Gorge Community College in March. Um, it'll be March 1st, actually, a couple weeks from now. And we have a couple of those people sitting in with us today, too. So um, it's, it's very interesting to see the partnerships that can develop when you have uh, uh, are working on one of these projects. One of our uh, milestones was that we have uh, over 17,000 views uh, on our two uh, YouTube channels. Um, because I didn't realize uh, that I needed to not use my own name when I started the first channel, uh, we have actually two channels. Um, and uh, we've got about 17,000 views of, of videos that are on those sites. So we're very pleased about that. They've come from all over the world. We've had email and feedback from people in Germany, in Denmark, uh, Scotland. Um, and we've, most, of the, most of the views, obviously, come from the US, though. And uh, most of them, uh, I'm thinking, are coming from programs like yours. OK. One of the things that we probably need to clarify is what, what the idea behind WinTech TV. And WinTech TV is a collection of web-based learning materials designed to enhance understanding of specific topics or concepts that are fundamental to the work of the wind turbine technician. Instructors and students can use these in a number of different ways to support classroom and lab activities. So that begs the question, what is Win TV, WinTech TV, what is it not? It is not an online course. That is, you know, many of you are, are delivering online courses. This has nothing to do with being a standalone online course. It's not a ready-made curriculum. Uh, those of you working in WinTech curricula uh, have already got everything built for you already. What we wanted to do was provide some materials that you could use in those curriculum. And it's not a substitute for instructor-led activities. When I put this photo up here, um, this was a blade donation that our instructor, Dave Bertel, got uh, from one of the industry partners. You know, it's very difficult for us to uh, do anything with a video that would teach a student what it takes to load that blade onto the trailer safely. So, you know, what, the, what we hope to do is to support your classroom and lab activities. Okay, I guess it's time for any questions at this point. Uh, you can just type them in um, into the chat room if you have any.
Okay, Isaac, as you can see, uh, is asking, is this at all affiliated with the AWEA Win Technician skill set? And yes, it is. Um, it's one of the documents that we looked at early on um, was that skill set from the American uh, Wind Energy Association. Uh, Dave Vertel, our uh, other presenter, uh, is, is very active in the educational end of the uh, AWEA, and I believe uh, that Dave helped to put together that skill set. So that was one of the things that uh, we definitely looked at early on to make sure that we were trying to line up with that. Okay, do we have any other questions at this point? Okay, I don't see anyone typing, so we'll just go on. Okay, there are really three different ways that you can get to the content that uh, we've developed here. Uh, right through the website, through the YouTube channel, and also through, through Facebook. So on the website, we have access to all the learning materials, and not all of them are videos. So um, you'll see things on the website that you won't see on the YouTube channels and you won't see on the Facebook page. Um, for example, we have flash uh, content. Um, we have some PDFs that students or instructors can print off. And we also have a 3D uh, module that I'll show you a little bit later. Also on the website are links to the, some NSF centers and projects. And we also have some other project information there. Um, on the YouTube channel, you have access just to the video content, but that channel can be fairly useful um, because much of the content on the site is video based. So I think it can be useful for you to be able to just see that and it's very easy to get to. Um, also you can subscribe to the channel and they'll be alerted when new videos are posted. But uh, the one thing that the YouTube doesn't have, for example, is the skill checks. At the end of uh, each lesson, we have a short four or five question skill check. It's not a graded thing. Um, and so it, it, it gives feedback to the people that have viewed the videos to see if the, whether or not they've gotten the, the main points. And uh, there's, our, there's where uh, you can uh, see the YouTube channel right there. And one useful thing that we found out by starting up the YouTube channel was that we were able to get lots of useful analytics. Um, we can find out, for example, how long the average person watches a given video. So if we have a four minute long video and viewing drops off rapidly after about two and a half minutes, we can look at that video and determine whether or not there possibly would be something that we need to change or, or uh, do differently in order to make the, that go up. Right now, our average viewing uh, times are above average for all YouTube videos. Okay, now I do see we have uh, a question came in from uh, uh, Monty who's asking if we are interested in blade repair. And, and yes, it was not one of the original modules that we put in our proposal, but we do see a need there. Um, I, I think that many of us that work in the field understand that uh, composite repair is going to be growing. Um, and we hope to address that. We may actually do an extension of this project. Uh, this project will finish in June of this year, but uh, we hope to maybe get some more funding to do some more things. So uh, definitely we're, we're looking at, that's one of the areas that we're looking at. Okay, one other thing I guess on the YouTube is that we had many, many more viewers than we would see on the website. 
And this is because people can use the YouTube search engine to find our videos, but also those videos will come up as suggestions for them if they've been looking at things about wind technology or wind turbines. Our videos will come up as suggestions from YouTube. So we've gotten a lot, uh, a lot more uh, viewing that way. Our Facebook page is another way to connect. Um, you know, we put weekly updates there. We do news. We do links. And it also has the usual social media features. Uh, we do see some things coming in through our Facebook page, some people interacting with the Facebook page that we don't see uh, other places. You can contact me. Uh, there's an email through our, our website. But, uh, you know, a lot of times people like to uh, use Facebook for that. Okay. Right about now, I'm going to um, take you through a little bit of a website tour. This won't be lengthy. Um, probably, I have a feeling that many of you have spent some time poking around uh, within the website. So um, I don't want to... You spend a lot of time with that. Um, you'll have plenty of time to do that after the webinar is over. But I did want to show you a few things that maybe uh, hadn't been obvious to you. Okay. Before we do that, let's take let's take a look at uh, Joshua's question here. Could you provide us with open source animations, links, files pertaining to specific wind turbine components and properties? Animations should allow for commentary or changes. Okay, I've been finding a lot of animations and they don't work together well. Anyone find some nice sources out there? Okay. Um, I think some of that we can address if, you, if other people in the room can point Joshua towards some other materials. I'm going to keep going with our touring here. I do want to let you know that when... Uh, we talk about open source. All of the materials on the website are free to be used. Uh, there's no subscription. There's no login. Anyone can look at them at any time. And in fact, uh, some of our friends out in Kansas have uh, downloaded some of the videos into their own online courses. And that's certainly doable. Um, as far as animations, we yes, we have some flash animations that we've put out there. And Typically, they're embedded in the video. Some of them are not. And, you know, if you wanted to modify those in some way using Flash, we could certainly, you could contact me and we could certainly send you um, the source files. And you could uh, go ahead and uh, modify those as much as you wanted. Okay, Steve, so it would be nice to have a wind instructor resource site. It would be nice to have an instructor support site at WindTech TV. Um, I think those are both good ideas, uh, Steve. We, um, it was not part of the scope of our original proposal, um, but as, we, as you do these projects, you find out things that you didn't know, and you find out things that uh, people are asking for that you didn't realize that they might like. So, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do our little tour here. Um, this is our home page. And I think when I scroll down here, one of the things that's on the home page that might not be um, available or, or obvious to you in other places is some of the industry expert demonstrations. We have a bore scope inspection video, and we have a very nice wind turbine grounding uh, video that was uh, put together um, recently. And that just talks about the importance of grounding and some various grounding methods uh, for the turbines. Um, when we get into the uh, 
you know, there's our home page, and as you see these drop downs, we'll, this is sort of things that will tell you a little bit about the project itself, who the senior staff is. Um, I should say that we started out with a different principal investigator. Jeff Davidson was our PI to begin with. He's recently retired, so I've taken on that role just in the last uh, three or four months. Uh, when we get over to the modules, these are what we've pulled together. And as you click down through these, you'll see that it'll take you out to a page with lessons and lessons and skill checks. And these lessons tend to be video-based for the most part. Some of them are not. Um, but I did want to, probably many of you have poked around in there already. I did want to let you know that we've got a nice physics module um, put together by our, one of our co-principal investigators, Dr. Zeshu Song. Um, these are all flash animations, and they are not videos. And uh, there, as you can see, there's a, uh, he talks about some some of the gearbox, uh, solids and liquids, the blade force analysis, uh, heat transfer in a gearbox, stress analysis in the gearbox, and, and vibration analysis. So that's this is not uh, these are kind of basic physics lessons that have to do with the uh, wind turbine. There's our video demonstrations, but also down here in bonus materials. If you haven't really looked there much. These are some materials that were put together for a different project back in 2003-2005, uh, but are relevant to uh, what uh, wind turbine technicians might deal with. Uh, there's some machine control circuitry in here. It talks a little bit about solenoids and relays and how those work. Um, there's also a, a virtual multimeter troubleshooting piece with a typical uh, start-stop interlock circuit. Um, so these might be useful to you as well. And that's something that is sometimes people don't drill down that far. Uh, we also have some news articles and upcoming events. The webinar was there. Uh, interesting, uh, you know, when we start to talk about our partners uh, and that adv advisory committee and industry partners, we've had some very uh, very good support from from industry. Um, Axiona has let us uh, shoot video in their plant in West Branch, Iowa. Um, Greenlee has provided tooling. SPX has provided tooling. Uh, Burnby has provided uh, the grounding seminar that uh, you can see on the industry experts uh, demonstrations there. So that's basically what you're going to see in the website. Also on the front page, of course, is our career video, which is about a six or seven minute long video that tells that can possibly be helpful for you in recruiting because it does tell people a little bit about what it's like to be a wind turbine technician. And it also talks to students and let uh, students talk about their experience in, in a program and what schooling is like for that. Um, also, our latest, oh, we always put the latest video up here, and then we do have a, a 3D piece that we're going to be getting to shortly. Um, okay. Let's go back here. Yep. We're going to head back to the regular presentation now. And we have any questions on what the website itself is like or anything about uh, use of the site? Oh, sure, Josh is uh, responding here to Steve, and uh, I didn't see that one before. Um, it would be great to have an, an instructor resource site. now. Of course, you can take any of the video here or any of our flash presentations and either link to those or embed those in your PowerPoints. Uh, if you've got questions about how to do that, you can just contact me. Uh, everyone, I believe everyone here has my email address. I've been 
bombarding me with emails over the last few uh, weeks, so uh, we'd be happy to help you out with that. No problem. Any other questions at this point? Okay. Well, we're going to keep going here. Uh, we're going to bring on Dave Vertle, who's uh, going to uh, talk to you about his role as the technical advisor in the project. You know, Dave is a, a wind turbine technician instructor. He does that every day. He's in the trenches, just like many of you are. And uh, he'll tell you a little bit about what that was like, how he uses the site in his uh, teaching, and a little bit about uh, an ASCELT donation that uh, he was able to get and how he's used that in his uh, um, teaching. So we'll turn it over to Dave here in just a minute. Hello, oh, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dave Vertle the uh, Wind tech, uh, Technology Director up at Thailand Community College. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on with you today. Um, I was asked to give a, uh, a brief overview of some of the su successes as I saw it, <coughs> excuse me, with the, uh, with the, the, uh, the grant that we received. Um, it's been a great opportunity for me to add to a uh, curriculum that, as, as many of you know, is not readily available in, in uh, uh, many areas here. We struggle with uh, coming up with uh, qualified books uh, to help uh, help us with the, the teaching aspects of this. And so to be able to have the opportunity to uh, to work with Phil, um, getting this uh, this uh, grant started, and to, to see it through uh, through the end here has been uh, just a, a, a great. Uh, aspect or a great uh, addition to our program with it. Um, <clears throat> three, uh, before I get going here, a little background on myself. I've been in the, in, in the wind industry for about nine years. I uh, was in construction, uh, blade repair, commissioning, uh, general operation and maintenance uh, in one site in particular in uh, central Illinois for the majority of those years. And I probably did things backwards by going uh, from that aspect into development, but I was also a developmental manager for a 100 megawatt uh, site up in northern Illinois at Axiona site that actually allowed me to start my networking and has become uh, a very vital piece to uh, opening the doors for aspects of this grant uh, with it. So I, first and foremost, I, I would encourage most of you, as you probably do, to continue with, with networking because it, it really is a vital piece uh, to, has been a vital piece to our success with the program. Um, I've also had uh, good success with also being involved with the, the WEI Education Board uh, for the past two years, and uh, this grant has done nothing but uh, help open doors for not only ourselves, but for many, uh, many other colleges and, and technical colleges across the country um, because of just conversation with individuals, uh, mainly manufacturers, uh, that have come to to uh, to us. I say us, uh, we, uh, and uh, to me in particular, on uh, some uh, instances that have helped us uh, tremendously with this. So, well, uh, what I'd basically like to do is just give you uh, an, an overview of the success that we've had with the grant, how uh, how I I use the site, um, not necessarily how uh, you have to use the site, but it, I've used all the modules um, extensively, and it's been it's been uh, great from the standpoint of uh, implementing it into my my curriculum, because uh, it you struggle especially with a new pro program. Uh, we're five years old now, but you struggle with a new program, and when it's uh, wind turbine uh, technology related and specific to it. Um, you certainly have your, your struggles along the way. So this is really aided in the instructional uh, portion that we deliver out there with it. 
Um, I, I have six classes that I teach, and as we've grown this, uh, these aspects of the, of the grant or the modules with it, have Im implemented them into the, uh, the curriculum, have uh, asked for student feedback on them to see what they may change uh, with it. I've also taken it to uh, internship sites that we, we work at uh, uh, extensively uh, here locally and asked for their input as well and with it. And I believe it's been very, very well received with it. The nice part about it, uh, it's, it's allowed us to grow extensively as a program uh, with it. We've uh, had great success with donations um, in general with it. The, uh, the biggest donation that we, we received uh, to date was a, uh, a V15 uh, wind turbine uh, from Green Energy Maintenance. Uh, and that came through just a, a working relationship I have with the individual up there um, and has been just a, a key piece to our success for uh, uh, being able to go out into the public and, and show what uh, wind energy is in specific. But we go through K go to K through 12 mainly with this. Um, it's on a 21 foot trailer. Uh, we have spent the past year and a half uh, modifying the unit, so to speak, with it, but they have kept it as original as possible with it. Uh, this is a side view, as you can see, but we've done little things like uh, going in and opened up the gearbox, put lighting in the gearbox, um, made the generator uh, run through additional motors. Uh, this is a, a, a fully operational unit, uh, anemometers, wind vanes, uh, program, programming that's involved with it, and uh, has been a, a, just a great success with it. Also has allowed us to, once the cover is on here, this is an open shot of it, but once the cover is on, uh, show off our, uh, our, our advertisers or our, our, our support that we've received along the way with manufacturers such as Greenlee, um, Axiona. Uh, green Energy Maintenance, who, who donated the, the turbine to us as well with it, uh, SPX Hydraulics, um, some key key manufacturers, as uh, Phil had explained with it. So we've been very, very fortunate with it, and uh, I've had, had uh, uh, good success with getting to uh, kids and, and uh, like I said, K through 12. Another side angle of it, uh, just from a, the, a side, sh another side shot with it. Um, V15 was a very popular uh, unit out in Palm Springs, and that's where these uh, these units came from. We do. Um, there's a, a a side shot of the the gearbox. Uh, we sh I show the the coupling uh, area there. Uh, part of the uh, the uh, one of the modules that we got into was uh, torquing and um, hydraulic torquing with it and fasteners um, through portions of this grant allows for alignment tools on the high-speed coupling. So they use laser alignment tools, which is, is something that uh, uh, not all sites out there have, unfortunately, but uh, allows our students at least to be able to have the capability of uh, taking something that is a fairly expensive piece of, of, of equipment and utilizing that on uh, for more of a hands-on opportunity with it. There's the, uh, the nacelle cover with it, some of our sponsorships on the side, just to give you a general idea what uh, what we've had the opportunity uh, to do um, with it as we move forward with it. This was one of our fairly uh, larger projects here. This is a, uh, a donated bull ring uh, with it, and we went out and purchased uh, four yard transmissions with four uh, motors, um, and this has become a a project related to the obviously the yaw system with it, but they uh, the modules that are in place right now um, help with this process here. And there's one that's uh, coming up. A uh, some slides that Phil will be presenting here shows more of a breakdown of what we do with these yaw modules or yaw transmissions with it. But it teaches pinch points. Uh, you know, not everything is is 20 pounds. You know, compared to uh, each one of these units, it's roughly weighing you know five to six hundred pounds with the motor in it. Um, wiring aspects of it and trying to incorporate in all aspects of, of the modules that are included within the YAW grant it, uh, or the, uh, the NSF grant itself with it. So um, this, was, this was a real nice key addition, but the, the bull ring itself was a donated item uh, with it and that came through networking. And the networking 
really um, started with people, with manufacturers coming to us and saying, I understand you have this grant. How can we help you with it? Because it's been a, what they're doing now at the end of this third year is coming up to us more and more um, and saying, this is a great piece. Can you can you uh, input this uh, with it? Our, 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 our uh, partnership with Axiona has uh, really been fundamental in getting a lot of this video. And I understand that it's very rare to be able to get in on a plant floor of a uh, major manufacturer to be able to do this. But I guarantee it was the grant that helped open that door. So I, I really encourage each of you to be able to go out there, um, actively pursue um, uh, a, you know grants, um, and never think they're out of reach because uh, up until this point with the, this NSF grant, I did not realize what potential it had for our program, and I'm, I'm so pleased that uh, I had the opportunity to, to work within it. There's a uh, singled out portion of the odd transmission with the, with the motor assembly with it. Um, like I said, they, they use the, uh, all the equipment necessary as you would up inside a, a, a traditional uh, wind turbine. Um, these happen to be Camesa units. Uh, in the 2.0s, and that's another aspect of what's opened up for us. Uh, the first two years within the program, we had extreme difficulty getting internship um, or even on-site access for climbs with it. Uh, because of the grant and because of the uh, the networking involved with it, it's, it's opened up that door, and now all 39 of my students are able to go down on a consistent basis whenever they're free and do um, unpaid internship with it, but it's certainly the opportunity to practice what they've that w what we've set up within the grant, um, in particular, and feel more confident in the in the process with it. This is a control panel of another piece that we obtained uh, through the grant. Um, it's the control panel for our wind turbine. It's a small residential that uh, we tied into the the main lab building with it. But certainly, uh, we get into uh, fiber optic SCADA. Uh, aspects of this, uh, the taking down, putting up aspect of it, um, certainly not commercial, but it, it certainly allowed us to dive into another area that I, I never thought we would be able to get into, but once again, the grant had opened up for us uh, during the process. Um, I guess at this point, I'd, I'd like to open it up for uh, questions uh, with it uh, that I hopefully can, can answer on some level for you. There's many, many aspects, uh, you know, donations have come in left and right uh, with it. Uh, we've received uh, from major manufacturers, uh, the site that we work at constantly uh, gives us donations of uh, electrical equipment, motors, trans, uh, you know, used transmissions to see what happens when a yaw transmission does blow out uh, with it or a motor goes out, um, those aspects with it. So it has been great. Uh, Bruce writes, who, who are some of the companies who you have uh, internships uh, with it? Um, right now, the, the, the main company that we, we deal with is a company out of Dallas, Texas, that runs several parks up in this area. It's in Finjan, and they have been uh, very gracious in opening up the, uh, like I said, the doors with it. Uh, Highland is, is very fortunate. I, I do know that, and that we have roughly six wind parks within uh, two hours uh, of, the, of the college. Uh, this particular one that we go to for the internships is about an hour and a half away from the college. So it, it, it creates some, um, some drive time for the individuals, but certainly makes up for the, uh, the ability to learn uh, with it as well. So, um, you know, the AWEA event is coming up, and I, as, I, as it comes up um, and we have these education seminars, I'd like to be able to tie in uh, some of these questions that I'm receiving from you because it, it, it does pertain to that. Um, Isaac uh, asked if, uh, did you find that you were uh, inundated with salesmen once word of the grant uh, spread, then how did you uh, sort through the good and the not so beneficial with it? Um, really, the, the bulk of this <laughs> was through Phil. Uh, with it, and he's, 
it's allowed us to uh, to see who they were out there, and I'm sure that uh, Phil can maybe elaborate a little bit more on this. But from my standpoint, um, the people that came in were uh, uh, locally uh, that I. I either new, so maybe I was very fortunate that way. SPX out of Rockford is a hydraulics company that deals with the uh, torquing and tensioning uh, aspects of the, like the flanges and the blades with it. Uh, Greenlee Tools, who has, have been, uh, have gone above and beyond with tool donations, um, they simply asked for the chance to go out um, and uh, be able to climb a tower so they, they could uh, better their equipment and in the process have, have donated, donated a lot of equipment to uh, uh, through the, the program, through the grant, which allowed us to, if we if we had pay, had to pay for the, the turbine uh, from Palm Springs, which we did not, um, that would have been significant money. Uh, but because it was donated, we were able to take that money and then use it in another area that just really uh, just bettered the program all the way through. All right. Well, it's a quick overview, but I, I would encourage each of you to, uh, if, if I can help you at all with connections, because I know that's a lot of time uh, what you have to, uh, to deal with, trying to find a source for motors or use transmissions or blades or whatever it might be. Um, that's truly one of the bigger challenges out there, and the grant has provided a lot of those doors coming open for it, and I, I freely share those, because we all, we all gain by that uh, with it. One other question coming in here. I'll wait till it's it's here. Do your students climb towers, and how do you deal with the liability? Liability is on the, the college itself. It's a write-off sheet uh, through the insurance company with Infingen in this case, but it could be very well with Axiona, Clipper, GE, whoever it might be that, that owns the site uh, with it. And uh, so the liability aspect, of, other than having to go through the initial safety orientation, then they're on record with that, and it, it does not become a, uh, uh, a liability uh, point with it. Um, Elena said, uh, you mentioned that you had some uh, examples of transmissions that were damaged. Could you get photos of such examples on the website? Could be good to show students. Uh, I'll check with Phil on that, but I, I believe that's, that's certainly an opportunity that I could share with it because we, we, uh, we tear apart these transmissions and then we do our best to rebuild them with parts out of other transmissions that have already been donated. So that would certainly be an opportunity that I, I'd be more than willing to share even if it wasn't through the website itself with it. Okay, well, thank you very much. And like I said, uh, feel free to email me uh, any questions uh, as we move forward here with it. And uh, I look more. I look forward to hearing from uh, from you down the line here. Okay, thanks, Dave. Um, to speak uh, just briefly to Isaac, uh, uh, talking about did we have a lot of people beating down the door once they, they thought that there was some money uh, to be spent? Uh, yes and no. I mean, we had a few people that were, you know, wanting to see if there was a way they could partner with us to do some things. Um, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. But uh, for the most part, no, that, that's one of the, not one of the, the large problems that we had in trying to, to get this uh, thing going. Um, and also, to speak to Elena just briefly, um, you know, by all means, contact me. Uh, you have my email, and I'll get you hooked up with Dave. Uh, to so that he can send you his photos that he might have taken of those damaged gearboxes. Typically, we haven't been putting 
just still photos on the on the site, but there's certainly no reason we couldn't do that um, if you think that's valuable to you. So this is good for us to hear that uh, that uh, we might need to just put a place on the site that's uh, just for some still photos. Okay. Um, right about now, I'd like to show you our latest uh, thing that's uh, been put to the site is a simulation of the typical yaw drive reduction gearbox. One thing I need to tell you about this is that this particular thing is the only thing on the website that requires a download. Um, everything else can stream from the site, but this file has to be downloaded and you also have to download a viewer so that you can see uh, the full effect of this uh, piece. Um, we realize that this is kind of a barrier uh, for some people. Uh, you know, a lot of times people just don't like to download things, and I don't blame them. And also, you know, it, the, the times can be, you know, long depending on the kind of connection you have. But we decided that, that this was kind of worthwhile, um, and the reason we decided it was sort of worthwhile is that. Uh, we had Design Mill, uh, a company is based near us in Elizabeth, Illinois, uh, show us some of the work that they could do. And so we thought, well, we could put at least a little bit of the project funds toward uh, trying one of these out. And uh, we'd be interested to hear from you if you were able to download this and get it to work for you. Or, um, so. You know, in the future, uh, as you poke around in, on the site and decide what's what's happening, uh, it, this one is particularly interesting for us because it it is does require you to jump up through a few hoops in order to uh, to use it. Jason's kind of giving you a little show of some of the animations that are on the on the thing, um, but let's take a look at. Let me go over here. Um, when you first pull, when you first open this file, it doesn't look like you can do much of anything. But you have to come over here and mouse over on the left or on the right side, and then you'll see some tools. Okay. Boy. Okay. And some of these are just a step by step. You can step through an animation. But I wanted to take a look at the exploded views. Oops, I'm not mousing very carefully. Okay, here we go. That's what I wanted to show. Once this finishes its little thing, we'll get and show you how you can actually manipulate these views a little bit. Okay, so just with the mouse controls, um, you can move this around. You can zoom in. And rotate it as necessary. So, let me come over here and see if I can get rid of some of those callouts. Let's try it. And uh, some of the tools up here on the side will let you determine how your mouse works. Right now I've got it for orbit, so when I hold the left button down, it sort of does that. Um, if I want to just
is turn. Now it just turns around. Um, this can possibly be useful to you as you're trying to show some of the detail of this gearbox. Um, I'm going to step through this animation again one more time so you can get rid of the callouts. You're also able to manipulate each part of this. You can drag these around. Okay. As you mouse over, you'll get some component names, which can be helpful. You can look at this from any way that you want to look at it. gets a little confusing once in a while. So, you know, this was something that we thought might be useful because maybe not everybody has got one of these in their program or, the, or maybe they don't have this particular gearbox. And it certainly does show a couple of things that we thought were important. Um, it shows the major components and it also shows the reduction ratios of one of the animations that we have over here. Um, shows the, just the rotation. And then you can see the rotation with the case off or the rotation in transparent. Yeah. So there are several useful features here, I think. But we're, it's kind of an experiment for us. And we're not you know, really sure if this is something that's going to be useful to you all. So um, we kind of like maybe to get a little feedback from you once you've uh, downloaded it and played around with it a little bit. Okay, I think that's it for that one. Um, questions on that? Any questions on the, on the gearbox? Okay. Well, we're going to keep going here. Um, you know, I had planned to show one of the videos um, to you all, but um, it's four minutes long, and uh, it's probably very easy for you to see those on the website. So we're, we're going to kind of skip by that one and go right to talking to you a little bit about the ATE program. Um, the reason we thought that this might be important is that... Uh, you know, everyone f faces the same sorts of issues. They're looking to try to build learning materials or build a curriculum or uh, maybe maybe get a little equipment. And uh, it's possible that, uh, you know, these federal sources might be a way for you to do that. So let's talk just a little bit about what this ATE program is. I'm going to read to you something that came right from their uh, solicitation at, um, of their latest thing. It says, uh, it's got an emphasis on two-year colleges. The Advanced Technological Education, or ATE, program focuses on the education of technicians for the high technology fields that drive our nation's economy. The program involves partnerships between academic institutions and employers to promote improvement in the education of science and engineering technicians at the undergraduate and secondary school levels. So that's kind of what they, how they define themselves, okay? This year, the pro, uh, this particular program within the National Science Foundation uh, has about $64 million that they will uh, distribute either to exit, uh, current grants or to new grants, uh, new projects, okay? And they expect to make about uh, 75 to 90 awards, okay? So the ATE program supports these kinds of activities, uh, curriculum development, professional development, career pathways for technicians, articulation, uh, two- and four-year articulation, um, 
That is, they want to have articulation between two-year and four-year programs for prospective K-12 teachers that focus on technological education. Okay. Um, the program also invites proposals focusing on research to advance the knowledge base related to technician education. So, for example, if you uh, want to find out whether a particular teaching method was uh, um, working well and you want to do some research on that, this might be a fundable project through ATE. The technical areas uh, that ATE works with are advanced manufacturing, uh, agricultural and environmental, energy, uh, we've got biotech and chemistry, electronics, micro and nanotechnology, and uh, engineering, and IT and geospatial and security technology. So it's a wide range of things that are possible to be funded uh, through the ATE program. Okay, so now let's get uh, down to the nitty-gritty. What does it take to get some funds uh, from this particular thing? Okay. Proposals are accepted once a year in October. Okay. That's the only time that uh, you can really apply to this particular program. Let me uh, just make you aware that the National Science Foundation has several other programs that might take applications uh, all year long. So this it's just this particular one that we happen to be funded through this time uh, that has uh, accepts proposals in October. Okay. Proposal prep uh, needs to begin about 90 to 180 days before you would ever submit a proposal. Um, it sounds like a long time to say, well, wait a minute, I'm going to be uh, preparing a proposal or thinking about something for six months before I ever submit. Um, really, it's not too early to think about what you might want to do, how you go about doing it, who needs to sign, who needs to be part of that. Uh, six months out, but you know it can be done in 90 days. Uh, we've done them in a lot less time than that. But the longer you spend thinking about what it is you want to accomplish, the better off your proposal, the better your proposal will be. Okay, so the review process takes about five to six months. That is, you submit in October. Peer review will happen in December. Those recommendations will be passed to the program officers in the National Science Foundation, and they'll review them. And uh, typically, awards are announced, or you'll find out uh, in March, April time frame. Okay. So yes, you have peer review, then you have some NSF review, and awards are made April through June. Uh, the NSF fiscal year begins July 1st, so your funds release uh, would be July 1st. So, for example, in 2013, if you started, got all fired up today and said, well, I'm going to make a proposal, your proposal would go in in October. If it was funded, your project would start in July of 2014. So it's a long lead time, and these are three-year projects. So if you have an immediate need for a $25,000 piece of equipment, this is probably not the place for you to, to be proposing. You'd be better off to look uh, at one of the other programs. OK, so what's it take to make a proposal? OK. Um, having done several of these, I think I can't emphasize enough that you need to look at the solicitation carefully to make sure that your idea matches the ATE funding areas. Um, I've also served as a reviewer for the ATE program, and it's it's difficult to reject a proposal that doesn't meet the the guidelines. But that's you can tell somebody put a lot of work into this thing. They really had their heart and soul in it. They're, if they apply to the wrong program, if they don't follow the directions in the solicitation, 
as reviewers, we don't have any choice but to reject those proposals. So it's very important to take a look at the website and download the current solicitation, which is like a request for proposal, and um, take a look at that very carefully to make sure that you, what your idea is will line up with the goals of the ATE program. Okay, of course you want to outline the steps needed to complete your project. You want to make a budget. I t tend to do this quickly. Uh, as soon as the, as soon as I have a basic idea, I start to do some numbers with the budget because this will impact everything that you do uh, going forward. And you have to make sure that your proposal uh, has enough budgeted funds to do what you say you're going to do. Um, also, you want to start talking to your, your administrators. You need administrative support. You need your dean's support. You need maybe your college president's support. They need to be on board before you start writing. Um, don't, don't wait till the last minute and put a lot of effort into it and then find out that there's not really the amount of support that you need. You also want to think about who will actually do the work. You have a great idea. You want to uh, accomplish certain things. But all, many of you are probably full-time instructors. You know, how many hours are there in a week? How much can you devote to this project? How much do you need to devote to your teaching? Is there going to be some release time involved? How will that work? Will you need to hire some uh, temps or part-timers? Or will you need to hire somebody that's just uh, to do certain things that are just for the length, the term of the grant, if it's funded. Uh, it's very important to figure out who's actually going to do that work of, the, of actually making the project go. And also, what partners are needed or desirable? Um, it's much easier to do things when you have the support of some partners. For example, we have Columbia Gorge Community College out in Oregon supporting us with helping us with field testing. We have Riverland Community College in Minnesota helping us with our field testing. Um, we have some industry partners and um, you know as you saw from the earlier slide, ATE encourages partnerships between uh, business and industry and community colleges to achieve certain results. So you're definitely going to have to line up an industry partner, I would think, in order to make this happen. OK. So again, review the solicitation carefully. I can't, uh, you know, as you're going through and preparing your proposal, go through and, and you know, highlight the important parts in the solicitation that you know you have to have in your proposal. Incomplete com uh, proposals are not reviewed. As I said before, reviewers are not allowed to take a look at proposals that don't meet the minimums. Uh, you might want to consider writing, there's a required one-page summary. You might want to consider writing that first because that uh, helps you to give some clear, concise answers to some questions that are important. What's the need? What is the need of your project? Why is there a need for your activity that you will do? You'll need some citations from the literature. Uh, what will be done? What actually are the activities that'll, that will be done? Why is this a good approach? Again, you want some citations. If you're going to be saying that, uh, well, we're going to um, make some videos, for example, about wind turbines. Why, why is that a good thing? You know, we were able to cite some literature that said, you know, this is a good way to document for students to see certain parts of, of the turbine that are technical areas that they couldn't see. Who will do what? What is the chain of command? Who's responsible for what? Who's going, you know, who, um, if your, your principal investigator will have all overall oversight, but who else will do certain things? And you may have a project team that becomes pretty large, depending. 
So um, you're going to have to figure out how to how to herd those cats in some way. Also, why is this team qualified to do it? One of the questions you know you need to say is uh, one of the questions you need to answer is why your particular team is uh, is qualified. Maybe you don't have to say that you're the best in the world and that there's no one else that can do this but you, but you do have to make sure that the reviewers and the program officers understand that you have uh, the educational background and the um, work experience to do what you say you're going to do. Okay, that was a real quick run through on uh, uh, some things about the ATE program. I mean, 50,000 feet is uh, is <laughs> way out there for, for what you actually would do with this. But we wanted to kind of put it out there and let you know that it's not, it's not impossible for a community college instructor to make this happen. Uh, you can't do it by yourself. But it's it's definitely possible to make this happen. So if I can answer any questions about uh, um, that proposal process, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, so Bruce is uh, asking uh, how much funding was allocated for your project. This was a three-year project. We had about eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars allocated for that. Um, sounds like a lot of money, um, but most of it went to labor. Um, one of the things that you should know about the ATE program is that they have a hard limit for equipment. And equipment, of course, as you may or may not know, is things that are valued at over $5,000. Okay, so if you have a bunch of items over $5,000 that you really want, a uh, hard limit for this particular program was $150,000. Um, that's, that's all you can get. The rest of it is labor. So in this particular grant, um, I was brought on as a full-time project manager. This is the first time that I've worked on a grant that we had a full-timer who was uh, uh, responsible for nothing but grant activities. Uh, typically, what happens is you have uh, instructors and administrators that have time given to the grant, and that time is paid for through grant funds. So, uh, but uh, this particular one we had myself as a, as a full-time project manager, and I think we got, we're able to get some uh, a little better results this time because of that. Um, not because I'm the greatest, but because we had someone who, we, we didn't stop and start. Um, as you, as you know, well know within, uh, within a semester, there are certain times of that semester that you just can't work on anything outside of your classroom. That you've got to devote all your energy to the classroom. And so that makes for stopping and starting. You do something for a little while, you then you put it down, and then you pick it up again three months later. And that's that's time consuming. And it's uh, uh, you always end up uh, taking a, a step back every time you pick it up again. So uh, I was able to make sure that we were able have something done with the project every day. And we also have a couple of student workers who work uh, for us every week, which was very helpful. Uh, they, they were our web designers. So long, uh, long answer there, but most of that money goes for labor. Do we have any other questions at this point?
Okay, so Elena is asking, you mentioned that you had some, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one here. Did we, nope. There we go. There are typically five NSF reviewers for the proposal. What are the criteria for accepting the proposal based on these reviews? I'm not certain well let me just let me just elaborate on the process a little bit um, the peer review team will take a look at all the proposals that they are handed um, they will make recommendations their the program officer will talk to the team a little bit about what the priorities are in a given year what they would like to see, what they're hoping to fund. Um, and then the reviewers will make recommendations about the projects that they are given. Those recommendations are passed on to the NSF program officer. Um, now, so every time, um, yes. Um, Every time the team makes a, a, a recommendation doesn't necessarily mean that if they recommended that for it to be funded, it may not get funded. Uh, the program officers are the ones that slice up the budget in, in a way that they feel is appropriate for a given year's funding. So even though a review team may say that, oh, we, we really like this proposal, we think it should be funded, the program officer may say, well, we, we'd love to fund it too, we just can't fund it this year. Um, now, of course, there are, in the solicitation, you will see that there are some review criteria that are always foremost with any NSF, and that is the intellectual merit of the project um, and the broader impacts of the project. And they also look for some innovation. Uh, the, you know, they don't like to fund something that you're already ready doing, okay? So when the team passes that on, you know, the it's it becomes a little bit opaque. It's a little hard for uh, the rest of us to know exactly what the program officer's uh, brief is for a given year. So um, if sometimes we've had it in the past, where a, a program officer may say, well, we really liked this proposal. Uh, we can't fund that one. We would like to fund something along these lines. And we've actually had a project funded that was somewhat, uh, that was very different from the actual, from the proposal that we made. So, okay. Uh, Chet is saying, is there an exchange any exchange to help someone find another program that is interested in a collaboration? You know, Chad, I don't know of any place like that. Um, I think most of the projects tend to work on their uh, their own personal connections, you know, uh, or they use their administrators to help you know, many times your administrators uh, get out and about a little more than, than you might. They may be familiar with other community colleges. In this uh, WinTech project, I was not familiar with Columbia Gorge Community College. I was familiar with Riverland from something else, but it was my dean that uh, said, oh, yeah, you know, uh, the folks at Columbia Gorge were very helpful to us. When we set up the program, we, we've been out there. You know, it would be great if you could, you know, if we could include them in, in this project. And they 